much for coming to listen and for inviting me here. I'm honored to be joining you. And um, we're, I'm gonna, sitting at this table with the esteemed colleagues and who bring so many different ideas and thoughts and hopefully new thoughts um, because we all know that there's no single thing that heals. It takes a myriad of approaches and many different, for us to be open to many different ways of healing. And there's no single thing that suits everyone. So you may hear about, you may have heard about cannabis and especially about CBD, which is, a, a, it's on the tip of everyone's tongue. And it's a, one of the, if you will, safe in as much as you don't, one doesn't generally feel high from it. So that is, has been deemed, I think, by the um, pharmaceutical industry to be a safer avenue. And I'll go a little bit more into that. Um, it is one of over 460 different components that make up the whole plant. And it's probably a great deal more than that because generally the most important questions are the ones we don't know yet to even ask. So we don't really know all the different parts of the cannabis plant and we don't know what everything can possibly do uh, to, to help us. So uh, I'll give you just a little bit of history. Um, in 1973, I was in a car accident and suffered a brain trauma and in the early 70s it was deemed that the brain did not regenerate so if you had a brain trauma or a brain injury that was pretty much what you would be facing the rest of your life very strong pharmaceuticals which admittedly i took i had five to five grand malls a day was often hospitalized monthly at least at least once a month sometimes more um, and the Alternative, if you had no family to care for you, was to be institutionalized because of was a brain trauma and related to, uh, or thought to be related to an incurable disorder. It turns out that the brain does heal, and probably we know more about Mars than we do about the human brain still in the 21st century. It's a mystery. So my husband, uh, my then husband, had read in a medical journal about very early studies in the 70s, um, early 70s, about 70, 1972, I think the study was a Tashkent study, that cannabis had been used, uh, cannabis extract had been used in very high doses on a mice models with success in, to treat laboratory-induced seizures. Well, I, I'm a child of the 60s and I had tried cannabis, but I never thought of it in terms of medicine. Though my parents grew, we had our own gardens, and I was, I grew up very, with very health conscious father especially. So, not much candy, not french fries. Little french fried fish, but you know, so my friends were a little bit aghast when they came over to my house. To, <laughs> they didn't get the normal french fries. So, um, with that, I decided to change my life. I felt like I, I had no privacy, I couldn't take a shower by myself, grand mal seizures, seizures are debilitating, and I don't have to say, in this room I don't think, but I have to say that we feel pain, we feel illness, and it changes everything in our lives, it changes everything. And other people may tell us what we should do, and everybody will, but, right? Oh, you should do this, you should. But really, you have to be, even if not totally comfortable, it has to feel right to you to even engage. And we want to do so gently, not dive into the deep. Because it's it's brand new. And so I gently began to add cannabis, marijuana, in a way that I never had before in my life. And I monitored it. I kept a journal and my husband helped me because mind you that I was pretty sick. And I used, I smoked it. I smoked at the time I had a joint, which is a cigarette, in my pocket. And every time I felt a prodroma or an aura, which not everybody feels, but it's, in, it's an indicator in some, in some um, epileptics that you're going to have a seizure. So I was fortunate enough to have that indicator. And I would take a few puffs. Well, it, it, it didn't happen immediately, but within three and a half weeks, I started to begin. To, I began to see a change 
in the overall structure or uh, frequency of the seizures. And honestly, I did not believe it because I was seeing very expensive neurologists and I'm taking very expensive and debilitating drugs. And I just, even though I had grown up with a very different awareness, I still didn't believe it because I believed that the medical profession could, should, must have an answer for something that I completely had no understanding of. So I, I had been a university student, I had been quite, six, quite a good student, quite successful, working and going, going to university, and my life changed in a moment. And so I felt that everything else had to change. And what I came to realize, long story, it was a long story, it's 46 years ago that this occurred, um, I came to realize that it wasn't one thing that could heal. Cannabis could be helpful and was, but it took really a completely different approach to looking at my illness. It doesn't mean everybody has to move to the mountains with no electricity. That's not what I'm saying, right? You don't have to start taking massive doses of cannabis and doing everything in your life differently. But in your mind, looking at the way you're living, the way that you see your illness, that, that helps. And it's not easy to change. So, right? I mean, it isn't for, easy for me. And if anybody, I want to I want to lecture on, if anybody in here has an easy way to change, I want to lecture on that. Because it's just not easy for me. So, so we went, I began using cannabis and working with other friends, primarily friends who had cancer and HIV or AIDS at the time. So the, there was a 20-year span before I started WAM, and in all honesty, I started WAM because I got arrested. I wasn't going to go tell the police that I'm growing cannabis and it's great and everybody should take it. I wanted to, to live my life quietly and rather anonymously. But um, I got arrested for growing uh, five cannabis plants. And we used them for ourselves, and then we shared what we had with others if, as they needed it. And that began this outward change. WAM began in 1993. We decided to, people started calling and saying, can you help me? And um, we said yes. And so WAM was built for the needs of people. It's a, it's a still, we can't, since legalization, we can't use the term collective, and we are um, restricted from giving it away, which is what has been our basis. It's always been free, donation-based. And legalization has its benefits, and it also has its drawbacks. There are many reasons why it needed to become legal. But I won't go into that. I want to talk more about um, how to use cannabis and the, I, I think, I feel, the necessary um, questions that you want to ask. Because you can spend an awful lot of money and not get the outcome that you're looking for. And one of the main reasons you won't find an outcome is because single applications don't work. And I think Michael really, you touched on it. When you're, or to touch on it, but you, the touch of acupuncture speaks specifically to a person and the systems that we're made up of. We're not one system. There's not one thing to go and fix. You, you can't separate the body from its parts. So you want, if you're using cannabis, you want to know why and how to use it. Because it's not going to kill you. You can't die from an overdose of cannabis. But you could feel uncomfortable if you took too much THC. And there's a myth about CBD, which are the two main things that we hear about, but there are a myriad of components. CBD can make some people feel uncomfortable or woozy or dizzy. So we have found in working with our members that we look at People don't come, generally speaking, to say, I want to use cannabis because I want an overall sense of well-being. However, we found that that can happen because cannabis does affect the con consciousness, awareness, the mind. And that can be useful for some people, and it can be annoying and uncomfortable for others. 
because we're so different. What we do is we look at a bigger picture, the kind of arc of wellness. So mind, body, and consciousness, because no, again, no single thing heals everybody, and there's not only one thing to heal. One of the most important pieces as we look at cancers, depression, MS, Parkinson's, um, uh, sleeplessness, uh, restless leg syndrome, um, uh, seizure disorders, we work a lot with young people with seizure disorders. We have to look at the many things that are in the environment. So how you live, how, how much pain are you in? It's certainly very difficult to wake up in pain every single day and be happy and jolly. It just you know, they're not really synonymous. But how can we find relief enough that we can bring happiness in, that we can bring the, the, the pleasure in life? And remember, sometimes it takes just remembering it because there's not such a small window in our suffering as human beings. Life is not, as we age, there's certainly a lot more pain and, and the body becomes the functions of the body become less vigorous, less, less violent. So we want to encourage it. I could tell you amounts to take, but I would say I would say this: when to know what you're attempting to uh, quell, to what it is that you're looking for, what relief do you want to find, and to ask questions, a lot of questions. I think one of the problems with dispensaries, and I'm, I'm going to say clearly, I know this to be a fact, is one of the, dis the problems with dispensaries is they're selling a product. And it's not a product that works to relieve really suffering. It's engaging in awareness of what it is in your body, what hurts. You know if you can't sleep. You know if you have restless leg syndrome. You know these things and to engage the individual that you're working with. If you do go to a dispensary, ask them many questions. Write them down before you go in, because it can be confusing once you get in there. And if they can't answer the questions for you, please don't buy anything. Uh, don't buy everything. Sometimes you can be talked into um, a potential relief that you're not going to feel. What we found is working with the acid forms, which are raw forms, um, so THCA and CBDA, so not to get too complicated, but to bring those raw forms in, that would be like if you took the plant and made a milkshake of it. If you have a green drink in the morning, I don't know if you do, but if you do and you put it in your blender or raw, raw carrot juice, and when you cook something, you change its structure. You change the, the and, and that's why you smoke marijuana and you get high, because THC changes its molecular structure. And so it is absorbed differently in your body. In our bodies, we have a system called the endocannabinoid or endogenous cannabinoid system. And that is where the receptors in your body take in the information and utilize it. It's a lipid, it's a fat, it's fat, it has a fat basis, it, it, it adheres to fat molecules in, in your system. So that you, when you take a raw form, your body responds differently. There's not a great deal of science because most of the science is being focused on CBD, which is what the pharmaceutical industry will be selling you and your insurance companies will be paying for. But I can guarantee you that it is not a single answer or something, one component of a plant that has over four, again, over 460 different parts is in this single answer. So we look more deeply. You can grow your own cannabis. You can juice it. And you very likely would not get high from taking raw cannabis and juicing it. You're juicing it. You would find that you may find that it is as effective and helpful as spending your $60 for a small bottle of cannabis. I got to cut it? OK. But you can ask me questions, and perhaps I can answer them. Are you familiar with a website called Nootropics Expert? Is said to help heal the brain. Yes. No tropics. Yes. 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 I I do know about no tropics. So and have um, 
over the decades, it's been 46 years since I've been working on this brain, and has gotten older, and, um, <laughs> and I do forget things. And um, yes, I think nootropics are quite remarkable. And there are many, here's the thing with going, reading something and going out and buying it. There are experts, and I've and I, been I mean, sitting at this table, that can help guide you to find the answers. Because there's an awful lot on the internet that makes, it puts us in a position to broaden our awareness and to and increase our intellect. However, wading through what you need specifically can be a journey. Can, um, in our new in our new site, we'll be reopening on SoCal and Midtown. We're coupling a small dispensary with a greater community center. We're we're inviting therapists to come in and work with our members where we can provide one-on-one -on -one and more expanded um, help for, for our members because it's important that we know more than a, what to take, but why we're taking it. What's really wrong? Why does it hurt? Yeah. Uh, I'm curious. I have tried um, some form of sleep and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was involved. I can't remember. So um, my question is, I've tried a lot of natural things to sleep, none of them have worked, no one knows. Magnesium, you take your magnesium every day. Well, I haven't done that. Yeah. I, I would bet that if you do, it's going to help you. Yeah, but my question is, for the spectrum of all these products is more modern products. If I was to keep trying them, do you believe that I'd find one that would help me sleep? Well, the first thing I always tell people who can't sleep is start with, start with magnesium because most of us are deficient, and especially as we age, so you can't really get it unless you take it. I mean, there are ways, but it's complicated. So it's taking magnesium may be, uh, may be the first door that you open. And I also suggest, depending on the person, GABA, GABA, amino butyric acid, not gabapentin, which probably many people are on, but um, too many people are on. Um, GABA, G-A-B-A, -A. it could be helpful. It's a supplement. It's a, yes, it's a nerve, yeah, it's a neurotransmitter. So you can find, um, and it may or may not be the perfect thing for you, but by the time you spend all this money trying different cannabis products, start with what may naturally be missing from your body. Not, to, and we may have deficient endocannabinoid systems because we have the endocannabinoid system is, is massive in the body. It's a system. So it's one of the myriad of systems, many systems. So I would say you start, start there. B vitamins, reducing stress. Taking B vitamins is a really, it's a great way to help us stop that thing in the brain that just doesn't want to be quiet. Sweating, walking, sweating is great. Get tired. Sometimes you just can't stay away. Looks like we have a couple more questions out there. Yes. Who's next? Okay. I didn't see. Is somebody here? Sorry. Oh. Well, okay. um, did you say there were CBD candles available? Candles? Did you say that? You didn't say that. Okay. okay. I thought it said that. Uh, I, I, okay. Maybe said candles. I don't know. Maybe. CBD candles. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there will be. Yeah. I'm sure somebody's going to make those. are going to be in the market for fifty dollars a candle. It's getting crazy. It's there's so much hype. I'm just excuse me for saying that, but there is. It's turned into a business like well, it's it. Did I'm sorry? Can you repeat? Um, uh, instead of magnesium, because that's really not working for me. Did you say GABA? G-A-B-A, -A. it's GABA and you know, And that's terms. what it would be, okay, GABA. And and it's, that's why I thought you said. Don't take a great deal, it can be very relaxing. Uh, you know, it's, there's something called calm, which is a, it, you know, you mix it, which you said magnesium is not good for you, so. Yeah. So, you're the business that you're doing is or starting? Right, well, it's, we've been in, we're, we've had, plans been open for 20, Six years. Yes. Okay, so you advise that as well. Yeah, because right, we're a start. And we don't really have take this product. We have we make uh, we make components, we make remedies, formulas, and then we make the formula for you. Although now 
you know, and allowing us to make formulas. So it's a little bit more complicated, but we're helping people find a way to, to do that for themselves. So it's way in the back. Okay. Is that the name of your dispensary? Wham, yeah. I have some cards, I'll put them back there, and there are two. There are two. We have a place that we're open right now, and we're, re we're in the process of reopening. And in a few months, about two or three months, we'll be open in Soho. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can call our. Yes, you can call, and I'll help. Okay. One last question. Actually, not a question. It's an experience that I had with CBD cream that I'd like to share with all of you. Last winter, I had a small outbreak of shingles, and those of you. She had shingles and it's extremely painful. Close. Close. I um, had a small outbreak of shingles here on my left side last winter, and um, a friend of mine gave me a, a jar of CBD cream. And I put it on, and it totally immediately, immediately uh, took away the pain. Immediately, because in three days it was totally gone. Okay? Wow. So I think this is something to keep in mind, and something to keep in your medicine cabinet. The jar of CBD cream. Okay. Oh, we need, we need to move along to keep our uh, schedule, but uh, thank you. Thanks for your time.